Hello and welcome to this mid-morning taste challenge. We have from both from 2010. Well, Rich, um, I'll explain it. Crown Royal Black from 2010, rich and rare from no earlier than 20, no later than 2011, but I'm, it's probably 2010, but we can't be definitively sure. Anyway, uh, Crown Royal Black is 90 age longer than regular Crown Royal and also aged in charred oak barrels as opposed to uncharred oak barrels for Crown Royal. I guess it uses 50 whiskeys like Crown Royal does. I'm not sure. Uh, so it's very dark because of the charred oak barrels. It's not black, but I guess they didn't want to call it Crown Royal mahogany. See, You can see the brightness when the light hits it. Now the competitor, Sazerac's Rich and Rare Reserve. Canadian whiskey, a blend. Um, produced in Canada by Sazerac Canada and bottled at Sazerac of Frankfort, Kentucky. Normally that distillery is called Buffalo Trace, but when they do in certain things, they don't call it Buffalo Trace. They all call it Sazerac, who owns Buffalo Trace, but it's that distillery. And you can see through the clear bottle, it's almost gone. You can see on the back, there's a red band with the barley sprigs. Now the regular rich and rare run you about $8 a bottle or less. I think at Walmart it's $7.92 right now. I got this one for $9.99. They will run specials around here, $9.99. It's also got a plastic cap like the Crown Royal, but it's coated with a gold coating, make it look like metal. Whereas the Crown Royal is just clearly plastic, no coating. It's in the fancy Sazerac Canadian bottle, which apparently is also used for their brand called Golden Wedding, which we don't get in Louisiana. So $9.99, so let's say $10, $27.97 at Walmart, $28. So is the Crown Royal Black going to be easy to tell apart from the Sazerac's Rich and Rare Reserve? Yes, I think so. So that's not going to be the question. The question is going to be, is it really worth... $18 more. Now, I'm not sure. I got to go through this exercise and find out. So let's do it. Let's do it. CR Crown Royal. Now, they both have websites. Crown Royal, a rich and flavorful blend of Canadian whiskey. All, all the signature smoothness of Crown Royal matured in charred oak barrels matured and charred oak barrels and blend it at a higher proof for a richer texture and bowl finish. In other words, they're implying that the regular Crown Royal is not in charred oak. Sazerac Rich and Rare. Rich and Rare Reserve is an impeccable blended whiskey. Impeccable. Blended by renowned master blender Drew Mayville. That's Sazerac's Canada's uh, Canadian blend master, Drew Mayville. It's unique marriage of smooth and spicy flavors, smooth and spicy, make for a great whiskey on ice or mix or in mixed drinks. Now notice what they said, a great, great whiskey on ice or in mixed drinks. They didn't say neat in a glass at room temperature, which is what I'm doing it. Smooth yet spicy whiskey, perfect for any occasion. Tasting notes, nose, a peppery spice, peppery spice with toffee and caramel to balance the sweetness palate. They needed a period there. They got, they got some grammar problems like a lot of these companies. Palette sugarcane and candied fruit with peppercorn finish, soft peppercorn, period. Then we go again. I, get, I need to work for Sazerac and help with the grammar. Finish, soft and lingering with bacon spices and a touch of smoke, period. It got uh, a bronze medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. All right. And so that's what they're saying about it. Crown Royal, it's got a crown, a royal pillow with purple, of course. Produced in Canada, which is a kingdom, a constitutional monarchy, unlike the United States, which is a republic or claims to be. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh,
Not too many taste challenges left in the original rare reserve. It's been a great whiskey to buy for $9.99. It's been a an enjoyable experience, I have to say. Now, rich and rare, the regular R and R, regular rich and rare, rare from 1961. Yeah, I mean it's okay. I don't dislike it, but it's not anything great. The, the rich and rare is a big step up. Now, what's different about it? Uh, I don't know. Probably age longer, and maybe not with that Sazeracian flavoring. Plus, in a fancier bottle. Also has a crown on it. And that's the same crest as the regular rich and rare. Rich and, rich and rare is one of the top 20 selling Canadian whiskeys in the United States. So I can't look because the Crown Royal, as you noticed, or will notice, is dark brown mahogany. And the rich and rare reserve is just simply straight up gold. I do smell some charred oak, charcoal, here comes the train. Distilled corn, there's a helicopter now. And uh, maybe some spicy rye whiskey, rye whiskey, good stuff. All right, over here. Actually, the same kind of nose, but not with the char. You know what I mean? Like the sweet corn and the, without the char, the sweet corn and the and, and the rye spice. Do they use wheat whiskey? They could. I don't know if they do. They probably don't. But they could. Did they use single malt barley whiskey? You know what I mean? Like in Scotland, single, you know, barley whiskey, malt whiskey. I guess that's the right way of saying it. M malted barley whiskey. Many of them do. Many Canadian whiskeys are a combination of mostly corn, malt whiskey from barley malt, rye, and then many of them had have added flavorings such as brandy, rum, and bourbon from the USA. Not to mention a bunch of different wines that they they can mix without any limit. The only limit is that it has to be aged in small wood, as the Canadian government calls it, meaning a wine barrel. <laughs> Could be young wine, old wine, a blend of wines, one type of wine, strong wine, weak wine, doesn't say. So initially, I think this is the Rich and Rare Reserve. You can see I can't. It's a blind taste test. No comments. Okay. Taste. Too big of a gulp, like I thought. The Crown Royal Black, rich, creme brulee type thing, heavily charred caramel, charred oak, some rye spice, a lot of sugary sweetness, some, and they, like I said, creme brulee. So that's that's what it tastes like. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I don't really pick up the 90 proof on it as opposed to the 80 proofs. If I did, I'd mention it, but I can't really say. You would think it would give it more body, being 45% alcohol as opposed to 40. But I haven't really uh, noticed that, so I haven't mentioned it. It's just the flavor is stronger, more bold, and clearly charred oak. And then you'll notice the Sazerac Rich and Rare Reserve isn't going to be that way. See, here you're just getting corn, distilled corn, corn spirits, corn liquor, and uh, a pretty spicy rye. Oh, uh, gives you a freeze on a little bit of a uh, the willies is uh, like that, that that strong rye note. Malt whiskey could be there. Uh, 
I could buy nearly three bottles of the Rich and Rare Reserve for one bottle of Crown Royal. Not quite three, but nearly so. So let's say two. Is the Crown Royal Black really worth twice the price? And actually, we well, yeah, are twice the price. Um, $18 more. Um, more than twice the price. Um, this I'm not sure about. It's hard to say with these kind of questions because what's worth it to you may not be worth it to the other person and all those kind of things. You say, well, it's always worth to pay more to get better. It That is something I would agree with. But we're talking about everyday drinking and people say, I can't be spending all kind of money every day. You know, so uh, I'm like the Jeffersons. When I get home from work, I got my little tray, my little cocktail tray. Uh, making highballs or whatever. <laughs> you ever notice on the Jeffersons, they always be, be drinking mixed drinks. So um, in that case, and if you're making highballs, it's going to water down the taste anyway. So why are you paying 29? You know, why are you paying 28 when you, you could pay 10? I wouldn't. Okay. But then uh, you could make the argument, why pay 10 when you could pay eight? Get the rich and rare. Don't go for the reserve. Mm. Depending on how heavy, sweet, and additive cocktails you're making. If you just want base 40% alcohol, get another Sazerac product. Go to Walmart and get the one I did at Dawn, the Canadian, the caliber. $5.96. Now we're talking about $6. Tells you on their website, Walmart's website, it's a no quality liquor cabinet is complete without caliber Canadian. It's wonderful for mixed drinks. So you got to take that. And it sells, boy, it sells. I see they always got fresh rotation, you know. All right, well, let's call it first. It's the cr Can't even look at it. That's the Crown Royal Black over there. Oh, it was way over here. It was right here. Yeah. There's the black, the crown royal black, dark brown. Nina says Grand Royal, Grand Royal, right. Grand Royal Records. Once you go black, you never usually go back unless you get rich and rare reserve, which you find is a better value. I agree with that. That's the old statement. That's the old saying. Once you go black, you never typically go back unless you can save money with rich and rare reserve. And I remember that from a child. Now, I was watching the uh, Wild Card Wednesday last night replay. I was having trouble following that. Nina was on there. She was, Nina was very exuberant with the uh, uh, um, still reserve 211 8.1 tall can. I said, uh oh. And then going into uh, a stream of consciousness discussion of Atari gaming, which everybody loved. Ronald Sutton had a different type of approach as usual. Uh, and then it seemed to go awry in a way, though, because I never did see Michael Komarov score for his Bells Bright, the uh, Belgian style, kind of a blue moon type uh, St. Bernardus Wit type of thing, uh, Florida Cracker type of version of their uh, wheat beer. So I got to check with Michael and say, what was your score? I didn't... I didn't see you give a score, and then um, homebrew, you know, homebrew barbecue, uh, um, you know, in Colorado, he was um, talking about doing natural ice, but then I didn't see him review natural ice. I was saying, well, you showed the can, and I, so it was got very confused. I didn't know, I couldn't figure out what was going on on there. I, I did have. The natural ice, of course, may, not millions of times. It seemed like it. Uh, and I've had the uh, Bright from Bells, which I didn't find was too terrific, honestly. I'd rather drink Blue Moon, and I don't think I'd want to drink that. You know, honestly. Um, Steel Reserve 8.1. Yes, I've had that many times. That, that used to be the Steel Reserve sold in Louisiana. Sold in Louisiana, right there. I could get it right there at that store. Uh, and then it got replaced in 03, five years after I started seeing it. Maybe, no, it was 
probably seven years. I, I think I started seeing it in 96. I say 98, but I think it was 96. Um, with the steel reserve 6%, which has taken over the Louisiana market. They got rid of the 8.1 in Louisiana, which I'm glad about because I never did care for the 8.1. I want to retract that. I didn't love it as much. I did drink it, so I shouldn't say I didn't care for it. I did. I do prefer the mild and mellow steel reserve 6%. So I had the bright, I had the steel reserve. And I think I never had the one Eric was showing. I never heard of it. I never saw the one that Chadio brought. I never heard of that one before. Of course, the natural ice, which did, didn't look like he featured it. I couldn't figure that hangout out. It was too, like, anyway, too busy or something. That was one of the best wild cards you had. Budweiser always brings out the party, says FD. Yeah, I thought it went great, you know, for the most part. You know, we had to make a few little adjustments with some characters on there. But they did it to himself, or I should say he did it to himself, you know. I mean, you set the uh, game board, and if you violate the game board, you can't play the game. You know, that's how it goes, I guess. All right. All uh, right. I don't guess. I know. That is how it goes. Um, question. Is the... I got to check. I really got to check with Michael. I want to know about that uh, Bright, what he scored it. James had one I never heard of. Uh, I, I have heard of it, but I never tried it. It was a... It was a, um, a seltzer, but it was from... Um, you know, that Swedish vodka company, he liked it. He seemed to like it, but then I couldn't. Well, I didn't pay attention to his score because I don't ever pay attention to scores if I haven't had the product. Whatever the name of that stuff is from Sweden. They're they're absolute, absolute. They use the red, the red, uh, red wheat. <laughs> What's your next name, Ron, says Nina. Oh, um. I'm glad you asked. Somebody asked me last last night, and I forgot to mention. There's too much busyness going on. Next is try any Yingling beer. Examine any Yingling beer. And I was shopping around earlier this morning at 7.15. Mm. I saw Yingling 12 packs. Matherns, too high. I say, I ain't paying that. Walmart, still too high. I say, I ain't paying that. Food for less. Not quite as high, but not exactly cheap. I said, mm, mm, mm. well, I'm going to see if I can find a Yingling single. I know I can, like the Yingling flight, but I hate to waste time with flight because Yingling flight to me is a dud. It's like an inferior version of Michelob Ultra, and I mean really inferior. So you hate to waste money on that. I think I could find the Yingling gold. You know, they're all malt pilsner in a single over there at like uh, Circle K. Gas station, convenience store. I'll just buy that, you know. Yingling is okay. I mean, the Raging Eagle, I'm not paying $3 for a tall can of that. Mm -mm. I did that. I'm finished with that. Um, Yingling, the only one I really like is the Lord Chesterfield Ale, but of course, it didn't make it in Louisiana. They pulled it after a few months. So we got any Yingling beer next Wednesday. Stalling Svetka. No, it was the, uh, excuse me. It was the uh, the one I just said, the, 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 um, the thing <laughs> from Sweden. Absolute. Miller Coors products. Absolutely correct. Dutch beers, April 21st. Any Dutch beer. What does that mean? Any beer made in the kingdom of the Netherlands. Now you might say, well, Curacao is part of the kingdom of the Netherlands. Okay, well then make it, then bring it. I don't know if you're going to find any beers made in Curacao. You say, what about Aruba? What about Bonaire? What about St. Eustatius? What about St. Martin? Okay, well bring on, bring any of those, but you're not going to find, you know, you're not going to find any beers made in those islands. I mean, you might, but chances are low. You say, well, what's a Dutch beer anybody could find? You know what a Dutch beer is, is that anybody could find. Heineken, obviously. Heineken Light. Grolsch. 
some of the Trappist beers. What's the one, the famous Trappist beer from the Netherlands? Uh, that would be a one to bring now. Now you'd be now you'd be cooking with gas. The uh, La Trap, La Trap. Yeah, you could show up with that. Impress the world. La Trap quadruple. Impress the world. It would impress me. And then April 28th is any terrapin beer, any terrapin beer. I got a few choices I could bring right now, like terrapin. Oh, the one with the cherry juice and the hemp. It's a junk beer, but oh, uh, it is pretty good, though. I, I say a junk beer in the sense that it's like. Oh, man, my hemp beer, man, let's groove together and listen to Jefferson Airplane and get hot. You know, it's like, OK, that's too passe now. That's like Betty Davis eyes. But I might bring it because even though it's like a flim flam product, it's kind of interesting. And I don't think too many people had it. Is Kokomo under Danish rule? Kokomo? You mean we're going to go down to Kokomo? We'll take it fast and then we'll take it slow. I think that's a fake island, but I think it's Kokomo, Indiana. That was the Beach Boys' biggest hit from 1988, and you better go watch the movie Cocktail. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, I've never seen that movie. <laughs> but um, I think the main writer of that was John Phillips, Papa John. But if you got, if you are going to San Francisco, be sure to wear flowers in your hair. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, this Crown Royal Black is better. I'm going to say that. It's a better product. Nah. But we probably knew that before we started the video. But is it way better? Is it $18 better? Man, I'm I'm not too sure about paying eighteen dollars every every purchase, but it's almost like a foolish thing to bring up in a way because you could counterpoint me and say, yeah, but okay, you paid nine ninety nine, you you got the rich and rare reserve on sale, so you tried it, okay, you liked it, it wasn't great, but it was credible. Is it better than regular Crown Royal? That's debatable. Many people would say yes. And it's a good $13 cheaper. But that's, okay, another argument. Then we could say, oh, well, Crown Royal Black. You got to buy it because you got to try it because it's a classic product. Been on the market 11 years. It's really credible. It, it's worth buying. You really cannot disparage that. And I agree with that. You need to buy Crown Royal Black. You need to try it. If you're into tasting whiskey. And I told Michael Komaroff, I said, whiskey to me is like beer in the sense that I'm just tasting it, you know, whiskey, brandy, rum. I even almost bought Miles Gin this morning, but I didn't buy Miles. I said, I don't want to mess with gin. But I, everywhere I turn, left, right, I fall, ahead of myself, I see Miles. I say, look at Miles with that little fake Tangeray looking label. But um, is a, it is a product Sazerac is proud of. They feature it on their website, of all things. But um, brandy, rum tequila now, now that I got into tequila, mezcal. Um, to me, it's like beer in the sense that I like to taste them, you know, say, oh, it tastes like this, tastes like that. Oh, whoa, I didn't think of that. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And all of these things. Now, as far as being a whiskey drinker, y'all know I'm not a whiskey drinker. Now that in my life, did I, did I come home from work and say, oh, I'm going to sit back and drink some whiskey, sip whiskey and watch baseball or whatever. I don't do that. OK, we know that, you know, enough's enough. The cat's out the bag. Everybody needs to know that I do whiskey tastings and taste challenges. As far as drinking it, I don't do it. I have a friend, won't name him, don't need to. You know who I'm talking about. He calls me up all the time. I got a great deal. I got a great deal on a, on a, a Cuddy Sark, $22.99 blah, 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 for a handle bottle. He's all excited. Now, he's going to drink it. He doesn't just do taste challenges and little my little videos. I mean, he's going to. If you ask me too much, but anyway, I don't run other people's lives, you know, so he's going to drink it. 
he's going to drink and drink and he's going to drink other whiskeys. He's going to drink other tequila. He's going to drink other uh, products. So he's a serious drinker now. And most of his friends are. So they're more in tune to the whole lifestyle approach to the whiskey thing. I'm more into like the nerd approach, if you want to use that kind of derogatory term of just tasting it and saying what I think. OK, fine. But that's what I mean about it's similar to beer because I just taste them and tell you what I think. Wine, taste them, oh, tell you what I think. I did that uh, Gibson's Vineyards um, port wine. After I recorded the video, I felt bad because I said, I don't think I described it as well as I needed to. It tasted kind of like beets. A lot of port wines do taste like beets without the vinegar. You know what I mean? Just like the beet juice without the vinegar. It's a strange, it's almost indescribable. You have to try it yourself. Okay. So anyway, uh, um, final authority <laughs> on this is the Crown Royal Black better than the, the, the uh, Rich and Rare Reserve? I think it's better, but I'm not sure if it's $18 better. That's to be determined. And in my case, it never will be determined. So my recommendation would be do what I did, buy both. Buy both. I did. You can do it if you have the money. Uh, the blacker the crown, the sweeter the juice. Uh, I, I mean, I the smoker you are, the player you get. You know, that's my response to that. The smoker you are, the player you get. Cheap and foodie says, rich and rare for the sneak attack win. <laughs> yeah, you, a lot of people would say that. Yeah, a lot of people would agree. They'd say, this is a hidden, a, a, like a secret weapon, rich and rare reserve. It flies under the radar, but some people in the whiskey world, they know about it. You know, they'll call for it. They'll go out to a bar and say, I want some rich and rare reserve. And then make sure everybody hears them so they can start a con, like a conflict with the Crown Royal people, you know, that kind of thing. Just to kind of make conversation, get into some like controversy, but not in a, in a, in a, you know what I'm saying? Not in a hostile way, just something to talk about. Nothing wrong with enjoying a little whiskey now and then, says FD. No, and I, I do taste it every now and then, like, 365 days a year, but I'm not a drinker of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a taster. I didn't want to waste the product. So I, yeah, I did consume both glasses. But in a, if you want to get technical, I'm not a drinker of whiskey. I'm just a taster. And uh, people say, you lie, you lie. I bet you drinking it all day long off air. And I, I really am not. If I was, I will just admit it. I'll say, oh yeah, I drink it all day long off air, but I don't. And um uh, it's pretty clearly evidenced by the fact that I can have a bottle like this rich and rare reserve and rest on it for years, like literally do taste challenges with it for years. I mean, if I was drinking it down, I, I wouldn't be able to rest on it and like nurse it for years doing taste challenges. Right. Right. Uh, now what's coming up next, man, I bet you we won't have another taste challenge for a week. Well, Six days, let's say six days. Okay, in six days, we're going to go up against, uh, oh, this is going to be a controversy. <sighs> Ooh, maybe in my own mind, the heir to the throne. Oh, by gosh, by golly. Heir to the throne, what a product. Heir to the throne versus crown royal black. Is heir to, to the throne going to win? Are you crazy? It has no chance of winning. That cannot happen. But heir to the throne is a quizzical little thing. Then we're going to go on to uh, ah, Windsor Canadian. Now, that's a, that's a legitimate product. That's a serious product. It's been on the market since 1880. Not 1980, 1880. Windsor Canadian. Oh. I mean, it's not going to beat Crown Royal. Let's... Let's face facts, but it's going to compete. It's going to really compete. And I, I'm very excited about Windsor Canadian, which should be on the 15th of April. And then we'll do a later day, uh, like right now, mid-morning taste challenge with um, closing it out with Gibson's finest, rare. Man, if that's their finest, I'd hate to see the worst because I don't like it. I paid $9.99, the greatest deal in whiskey in my life. Now, that's the truth. $9.99 for a huge glass cork-topped 
handle bottle. Gibson's finest rare. I had people in Canada saying, are you crazy? That's $70, $65, $70 a bottle for that glass handle. I say, well, don't ask me why, but Savannah Discount had it for $9.99. <laughs> was no way I was passing it up. But I haven't been pleased with it. There's something strangely harshly woody about it. It's like you're getting stuck in the tongue with a uh, spear, little spears or splints of uh, of oak. No char, just uh, it's hard. Uh, I don't like it. No wonder they don't promote it. Um, yeah, the company basically just puts it on the market and does nothing to promote it. Maybe they're embarrassed of it. I would be. All right, anyway. <laughs> um, boy, if y'all knew what beer I got to review later today, you'd be praying for me, I guess. All right. Uh, nothing. Okay. I drink all day long, says Guitar Menjarui. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're drinking water all day. That'd be a good idea. Be hydrated. Do you taste cocktails? I like a Sazerac cocktail or like a, no, I don't ever drink cocktails. No, but my mother and my grandfather, when they would go out to the restaurants, they'd, they'd always order an old fashioned. First thing they'd say, I want an old fashioned. Nine ninety nine is cheap. Incredible. $9.99 for a handle glass bottle of uh, Gibson's finest rare. Best deal I ever found. And that covers any brand, any type of liquor I've ever bought. Unbelievable. The 18 year old rare, no, it's the 12 year, the 12 year, not the 18. Still, you'll see, you'll, you may not believe me now, but you'll believe it when I'll show you the bottle. You, you, but of course I could be lying. Maybe I paid 39 and I'm claiming I paid it 9.99, but I did pay 9.99. I did do it. Okay. So, uh, that's it. And uh, I think I'm going to start uploading a video now for um, an upcoming date because I got to do some revisits. So I got to update and keep up with that. All right. Thanks for watching this video production.